Hi, I'm Sasha, a food security analyst on the MVM team. And today I'm going to be introducing you to questionnaire design. Designing a good questionnaire is one of the most crucial steps of the survey process, as it will have a significant impact on the data quality and the integrity of the findings. So far, we've covered the basic concepts of MVM, introduced remote data collection lifecycle, and reviewed its first step, designing a sample frame. Now we're going to review the next step, designing a questionnaire. Now designing a questionnaire that will be implemented remotely calls for a different approach than designing a questionnaire for face-to-face -face surveys. The biggest challenge is to keep the questions short, especially for SMS and IVR response surveys. They must be also easy to understand and tailored to the local context so that respondents can answer accurately. In this lesson, we'll review the types of questions typically introduced in a remote survey and the specific considerations to take into account for designing a survey that will be implemented remotely. The first part of any questionnaire is a brief introduction and a request for the respondent's consent to participate. Here, the call operator, SMS, IVR, or chatbot message introduces themselves, WFP, the purpose, scope, and duration of the survey, as well as the conditions, such as consent, confidentiality, and incentives. This is a very important part of the questionnaire, as it's meant to establish rapport with the respondent and create a sense of security. It also confirms their interest and availability to participate. Now, if the respondent is interested but cannot talk at the moment, they are asked whether or not they could speak at a later time. If they are under 18, the survey is ended. Then, there are two main components to the questionnaire. Questions to monitor household food security status and questions that monitor food market related indicators. These two components can be combined into a single household questionnaire or they could be implemented in two separate surveys. One aimed at households and the other mark comp market component administered to specific types of key informants such as traders, vendors, shop owners, transporters, and community leaders. There are a number of standard questions included in the market component of the questionnaire. The availability and prices of food items that make up a minimum or standard food basket in the area being monitored. These could be rice, pulses, vegetables, milk, oil, just to name a few. Sometimes the units of measurement, for example, kilograms, cups, or liters, have to be adjusted to use local units of measurement, as these are the units that respondents are used to and able to report on accurately. Another indicator we look at is daily manual wage rates. These allow us to calculate wage to food terms of trade and thereby monitor household purchasing power. We also ask about market functioning and accessibility in order to understand if markets and supply routes are open. In the household food security monitoring component of the questionnaire, there are other standard sections and questions. We ask about demographic information, including gender of the respondent and head of the household, age of the respondent, the household size, housing type, and displacement status, just to name a few. We also ask about the household's food consumption through the, our indicator, the food consumption score. The respondent is also asked about whether they use any negative food-related coping strategies. Then there are also questions to estimate socioeconomic wealth. For example, water access, toilet type, roof type, livestock ownership. And finally, whether they are receiving any food assistance. The food consumption score tells WFP about which types and how much food the respondent's household has eaten during the seven days before the survey. The Reduced Coping Strategies Index tells WFP about the actions respondents have taken in order to cope with a situation in which there is either insufficient food or money to purchase food. 
Finally, respondents are usually asked an open-ended question on the food security situation in their community. This qualitative data is analyzed and we calculate the frequency of words used in the answers. This shows us which topics are most frequently mentioned and the results are then visually represented in a word cloud. At the end of the survey, the respondents are thanked for participating and then asked if they could be contacted again in the next round of data collection. Thank you for watching this video on questionnaire design. Next, we'll dive deeper into the subject. Good luck.